Hello everyone, hi, how are you? Welcome to Napa Valley in California. I'm here with the one and only Mr. Paul Wallace. Bonjour. How are you doing? Oh no, this is the English channel. This is the, you can speak English now. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, the car's great, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it's a new blue, a color which is specific to the new performance variant of the RS6 and RS7. That's got what we're gonna be trying out today. So Audi have come out with an updated, slightly more powerful, 30 more brake horsepower up to 630, 50 more newton meters up to 850, 0.2 of a second quicker to 60, down to 3.4 in this new, in this case, RS7 performance. But basically RS7 and RS6 are the same car. The only difference comes with this line right here. So it's just a lot more kind of a coupe style on the back. You prefer the RS7. I'm a big fan of the RS7. I prefer the RS6. Yeah. You get a bit more headroom in the RS6, but RS7, I guess, looks better for some people. <laughs> Comment down below which you prefer. Little update, it's subtle changes, so a bit more power, a bit more torque, but hopefully that'll give it a little bit more punch when driving it, which, I mean, to be honest, they were already so quick. I apologize if there's any wind noise. We've come to what we thought was a good spot, but <laughs> nothing we can do about the wind. Couple changes on the exterior. The most noticeable are these new rims, which I think look fantastic. They're also five kilograms lighter per wheel. So 20 kilograms all round. New tires as well, uh, which are just supposedly all round a bit better. But another way to tell the performance model is you now get two new trim options for all of the details. So like the side skirts, like the mirrors right here. E they're both options are matte. So it's matte gray like this or the optional matte carbon fiber. And obviously the new paint that we touched on briefly. The rest- Ascari blue. As is that what it's called? Ascari blue. Ascari blue, okay, very nice. The rest is on the interior. I'll hop around the other side. Basically, it's exactly the same, just with some blue trim. So you've got blue on the seats right here. You've got blue seat belts, but the most notable, I guess, is this new carbon finish, which has blue tint in it, which is kind of cool. The rest, if I start it up, is all regular RS6, RS7, so. Still got kind of this main screen here for your Apple CarPlay and all of that jazz. Screen down here for your aircon and then full digital dash. I mean, the interior still feels modern, um, doesn't feel too outdated. So yeah, the, I mean, basically it's just a little bit of an update. It's not a completely new car, it's just subtle tweaks which should just make this a slightly more performing and also updated version of the RS6, RS7. So let's go for a drive. So we're straight into RS mode right here. Absolutely. Might as well, that's what this is all about. It is the performance after all. So we're actually gonna have a bit of time in an RS6 later on in this video, but effectively it's the same car, just with a bit more boot space. I actually prefer the RS6, you prefer the RS7. As we drive past one right there, in Nardo oh, Gray. Very nice. Now, few tweaks have been done one of the one of which we've been noticing the most is the recalibration of the gearbox to be a little more characterful yeah there is a lot of road noise though i don't know if it's coming across on camera now it's probably due to the road that we're on which yeah. isn't the best road it's surface not the smoothest. it's not the smoothest but those rims whilst they look incredible and also have, I think, a pretty profound effect on the handling of the car, because when you take five kilos off each corner of the car, it makes such a big difference, and this just feels fairly nimble. I haven't been lucky enough to actually go flat out properly in one of the last generation RS7s or RS6s, but it does, it is amazing how it kind of shrinks around you and doesn't feel intimidated by a tight twisty road despite how big and heavy it is. And I'm sure quite a lot of that is down to the weight reduction in all four corners, but is one of the downsides of that, the road noise that it's now making. So by having slightly more performance biased tires and rims, we may be getting a bit of drone through. It surprised the two of us, but you know what? If you pump it into comfort mode, it is still a great cruiser. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the best thing about, I think, RS7 and RS6 is it's such a great all-rounder that 
flicking through the driver's modes, it has a complete split personality and you've got this insane shouty V8 with instant power, a really fun gearbox to play around with. Uh, and then you can literally stick it into comfort mode and everything just becomes a little bit quieter. Yeah, exactly. It'll be interesting to see maybe with the RS6, which we're going to be filming tomorrow morning, we'll be able to go on different roads and see if that road mm. noise is still there. The tarmac and service is pretty shocking here. Yeah. But it's weird to think, right, because Audi could have picked anywhere to launch this car. And you they would have come in. on the display. Say correction if you would like to go It's back not happy with us. Sorry, we'll start saying we're, <laughs> we'll say more positive things. It's not happy with us. Yeah, because they would have tested these roads. Yeah. So anyways, we'll see tomorrow. Maybe in the RS6 it'll it'll change things, but overall this is an incredible experience. Very positive experience with this car. Definitely the gearbox makes a difference. Having the V8, so for me coming out of the M3 Touring, mm. having the character and the sound of the V8, it is incredibly sound insulated in here. So when you're outside, you hear yeah, actually yeah, just how loud it is. But if you open the windows, which we're not doing because it's so hot, <laughs> you get that proper V8 noise, which is lovely. Now, a few things for me, again, coming out of the Touring, the steering just feels a little too light for my liking. I don't know if that's just just me, but definitely it's it's pointy, it, it does all the right things, it goes where you want it to go, but it's just missing a bit of character as mm. far as I'm concerned. And it is, but I mean, RS product Audis have always had this kind of very light steering. Um, and I think I'm maybe just not used to it. So that may be a very personal thing, but then, I mean, what a machine this is. The extra 30 horsepower and 50 newton meters of torque, I think just give it that extra punch where you can just drop it down a couple gears and then boom, off yeah. you go and it's just instant and relentless. Like you shift yeah. up and you're just, yeah, yeah. It's in a different it's, postcode. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it feels like it just sucks the horizon. Well, in America, you. zip curl. <laughs> Yeah, I do like all of the fit and finishing. Um, I'm personally not so sure about the blue carbon, but I love I the you, new... I thought you were going to say I'm not so sure about the center console. It's like, so this is one of the best interiors out yeah, there. Yeah, no, the interior Audi, is Audi did a very good interior. Yeah, this interior is fantastic. And the carbon steering wheel is great. The no, seats... It's Alcantara, it's not oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Alcantara <laughs> steering wheel is great. The seats are just that perfect kind of combination of sporty, but still yet very comfortable and usable on a daily basis and if we just pop it let's pop it into comfort i think whilst you do that the way that i see this car is a very capable alternative to a bentley continental gt and if you think how much a bentley continental gt is yeah this is a bargain yeah 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 and it and at least in the US, we've had the US spec prices. I'd be interested to know what it is in the UK and in France. The price difference up to the performance isn't shocking. Mm, yeah, yeah, I already haven't really gone crazy on it. Well, because it's not a completely new car. It's mm. a revised car yeah. based on, you know, on the same well, they basis. They did it on the old previous generations as well. Yeah. And again, they just tastefully do it right. I remember I had a really incredible experience with Audi in Chile. So down in the Atacama Desert or across in the Atacama Desert. And it was really interesting to talk to one of the designers about how much harder it is to facelift a car yeah. versus actually design a completely new car. Yeah. Because you have to tweak it in the right area. So when you're designing a whole new car, it's actually quite fun. You can almost start with a blank canvas, but then a facelift is, you've already got the product and you actually have to make it better. Yeah. And the RS6 and the RS7 are so hard to tweak. They look so good. The exactly. base is so good. And something as drast drastic as these new rim designs could go either way, but mm. I think they've nailed it. The way yeah. they look yeah. is, is just so cool. And look, now we're just cruising and it is so capable and you have all the luxuries you could ever dream of in this. You've got plenty of space. And the so way we were stunning. driving, the way we were driving on those little roads, to think how much space, how much weight, how much comfort we've got around us that you can chuck it around the way we did is just incredible. So if you're considering one of these cars, go for it. Because honestly, as an all-rounder, very, very hard to beat. I mean, Audi have, have just nailed it with this new performance. I'm kind of intrigued now to see, let's pull over here. I'm kind of intrigued now to see what the RS6 is going to be like.
And ta-da, here we are. RS6 Performance in a very cool silver dew matte, which is a new color as well as the blue that was in the RS7. Looks awesome, has a bit of a shade of almost pastel green in it. Stunning, this spec is so cool. And I'm sorry, Paul, I know you love the RS7, but I think this looks so good. It's got the black wheels, the red calipers, but mainly also the matte carbon finish that we spoke about. So on the diffuser, on the front splitter, on the side skirt. And this is where you can see the added benefit of having the wagon. Because even someone as massive as me <laughs> <laughs> can fit in the rear. But I mean, I've got loads of headroom and you've obviously got the added benefit of all this vertical space in the boot. One thing I am missing though, is the tailgate splitter that you get in the uh. M2 Touring, because that is very practical. But uh, yeah, I mean, this for me is what it's all about. This spec is stunning. It's also got the carbon on the interior, but without the accents in it, which I do think just the uh, standard carbon. Standard carbon. So yeah, RS6 performance looks awesome. Basically the same to drive as the RS7, but we're gonna hop in anyways. So let's come back on what we were saying yesterday, now that yeah. we're in the RS6, about the droning. Mm. So we're on a different road with a different road surface. And it we're, is much better. It is much better. And we're in the RS6. It is much better, but there is still quite a lot of road noise. Mm. So I think it was mainly due to the road surface yesterday but I do still stand by that I think that the new tires and the new rims affect road noise slightly. Because now we're just cruising in full comfort mode and it is ever, you know, it is- You can, still, you can still hear it, yeah. But I wonder whether if you test it back to back with the standard RS6, how much of a difference there'd be. Maybe the RS6, RS7 is already a fairly loud car on the road. Could well be. However, what is special and we're just gonna have to do it again because it is what this car is all about, is just how you can have this dual personality and yeah. being in the RS6 and having that added space, which as you know, I love. Sorry, I just yawned. It's <laughs> very early. I mean, It is yeah. very early the next day. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, the power is just ridiculous. What they've done if is they've added character to the RS6 platform through the gearbox, through this, um, you know, lack of weight through these new rims. Also, the one thing I didn't speak about yesterday in the RS7, which you've noticed a lot over the last two days of driving, is how good the four-wheel steer, steer is yeah. and how that has a big role in affecting the the car, like shrinking the car around you, basically. It just makes all of the corners effortless. And also around town. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is yeah, a yeah. huge car. I mean, I know we're in the States here, so we're not noticing it as much, but if you're driving around London or, oh or, God, yeah. or the British countryside or whatever, it's gonna feel like a massive car. But where we do feel it, and this is a very niche maneuver, but obviously going up and down the same stretch of road to film flybys, you can just spin it around. There's no three-point turn necessary, which it's not something that people will do on a day-to-day -day basis, just doing constant U-turns, yeah. but it shows how you can literally flip the car around so quickly without having to go into first, into reverse, blah, 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 blah. It's exactly that. And then, I mean, it is a big, big old heavy car, but that you can maneuver easily. And also when driving it on these little roads like we have been doing, like you guys saw in the RS7, genuinely feels like a sports car. Yeah, yeah. And I think you said it really well in your video. If you're buying one of these, it's cause you're a petrol head. It's cause yeah. you like cars. You know, there's no reason to buy one really yeah apart from just for the added performance and character and you won't be disappointed definitely coming into this the noise especially comparing to my m3 touring i mean just i don't know whether this one in particular has got a sports exhaust but it is so much louder than the rs7 yeah let's actually put a clip of the exhaust now and you tell us what you think <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you've now heard it, it does sound really good and like yeah. when I think back to the M3 Touring, having just A, that V8 grumble, the way you feel it through the seats and everything, does make a difference to the character yeah. um, of this car and everything does just feel a little step up 
the interior design and the price is also a step up. I was gonna say, if the price of this, or actually, no, flip it on its head, if you could get over list for your M3 Touring, yeah. and let's say it was a straight swap, M3 Touring, and you could get yourself one of these, oh, would you do it? It's very tricky. It's very tricky. There are pros and cons to both. There are pros and cons to both. I mean, my gut feeling is the slightly smaller size yeah, and the ability to put it in rear wheel drive and slide it and the slightly, you know, it has a tiny bit more feel still yeah. in the M3 for what I use it for, yeah, which is driving on Lille roads in the south of France. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I would maybe, you know. That car, the size, is better suited for those roads, but also exactly. the twisty tight roads. Yeah. It's a more enjoyable driving experience. Also, just the thing, I really enjoy having the rear wheel drive option. Yeah. So that, if I was living here, or oh, if yeah. I was living in Germany, the, well, or the if roads, I was, Yeah, the roads that we've been driving here. Unbelievable, this yeah. car's perfect. I would have this car here any day. If I was driving on the motorway to work every day, I would have this car. Yeah. Like this on the Autobahn, I think, will be impossible to yeah. beat. So I think it, it, it depends very much kind of what you're looking for. But I will say in terms of fit, finish, interior, you know, you've got Bang & O, sound system, just the bang way- Bang & O, I've never heard that before. <laughs> no, yeah. <you're> not. <laughs> bang & O. <laughs> um, the, every, you know, just the, the, the quality of the interior is definitely a step up from, from, from my MT Touring. And overall, this has just been an incredible experience. So thank you for sharing it with me, Paul. Hey, it's a pleasure. Thank you to Audi for flying us out here. It's been awesome to be able to experience this car out in Napa Valley and discover this area. And thank you to you, of course, for watching this video all the way through. Overall conclusion on the RS6 performance it is an absolutely awesome car and you definitely won't be disappointed. So guys, subscribe if you aren't already. Paul's obviously made a video as well on his channel, so highly recommend you checking that out. And I will see you again very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.